So we're back into the New Testament as we uh, turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 uh, today. Hopefully you've managed to read chapters 1 and 2 uh, over the weekend and uh, let's hear God's word. Paul says, so when we could stand it no longer, we thought it best to be left by ourselves in Athens. We sent Timothy, who was our brother and co-worker in God's service, in spreading the gospel of Christ to strengthen and encourage you in your faith so that no one will be unsettled by these trials. For you know quite well that we are destined for them. In fact, when we were with you, we kept telling you that you, we would be persecuted. And it turned out that way, as you well know. For this reason, when I could stand it no longer, I sent to find out about your faith. I was afraid that in some way the tempter had tempted you and that our labours might have been in vain. But Timothy has just now come to us from you and has brought good news about your faith and love. He has told us that you always have pleasant memories of us and that you long to see us just as we also long to see you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in all our distress and persecution, we are encouraged about you because of your faith. For now we really live since you are standing firm in the Lord. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy we have in the presence of our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. And may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus clear the way for us to come to you. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. May he strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. It's a fascinating insight into the heart of the Apostle Paul here. Here is this uh, family of Christians, uh, this community of Christians that have uh, come to faith in Thessalonica through Paul's uh, fairly brief visit there as far as we can make out. Paul had been hounded out of town by the opposition of the, uh, the Jews who refused to believe in Jesus uh, as the Messiah. And as he's moved on, he's grown increasingly anxious about the spiritual state uh, of these Thessalonian Christians. As you notice in those opening verses twice, he said, when we could stand it no longer. Uh, the tension about their spiritual welfare has grown so strong um, in Paul's heart that he couldn't wait any longer for news to know how they were doing. It's an insight, isn't it, into um, Paul in, in the moment of ministry being concerned about the outcome of his labours. In, in fact, he, he says that he, he sent to find out about their faith because he was afraid that in some way the tempter had uh, tempted them and that, that the, the Paul's team's labours might have been in vain. Paul was really concerned that these people who had professed faith in Christ, um, at having faced opposition and difficulty, were now giving up. That uh, they'd heard the good news about Jesus, but because uh, there were those who refused to believe and were making it difficult for them, uh, they were um, going to give up in following Jesus and return back to their old ways and their old uh, beliefs. And, and Paul is really uh, very nervous about this. He he can't stand the tension any longer. He needs to know how they're doing. Um, and uh, uh, he says in verse uh, eight, but now we really live since you are standing firm in the Lord. It has brought Paul a real peace of heart, a real delight and joy, knowing that they're standing firm, knowing that they're walking with uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. It's Paul's uh, greatest longing for uh, these folks in Thessalonica to know that they are standing firm uh, in uh, the Lord and uh, Paul is uh, praying intently then that he'll be able to renew fellowship with them and strengthen them in their faith. In the meantime, he prays uh, that the Lord would increase their love, and, uh, uh, that it would increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as Paul's does for them. It's interesting then, isn't it, that Paul's love for them is shown in his concern for their spiritual well-being. He wants to know that they're following Christ, wants to know that they're uh, living out, uh, being disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's concerned for them in the uh, face of opposition and difficulty. He wants to know that they're keeping going and, that, and that's how his love for them uh, overflows uh, to the point where he's actually willing to make sacrifices uh, and to be left uh, by himself 
uh, with just a small part of his team as he sends some of the team uh, back to Thessalonica to find out how they're doing. He's willing to make personal sacrifice um, uh, in in re releasing some of his team uh, to go and find out how uh, they are uh, doing. And that's how Paul's love overflows to them. Uh, and it's a good model for us, isn't it? And a good challenge for us within the, the, the life of our church family. Uh, to ask ourselves, are we similarly concerned for one another's faith? Uh, it's good to be praying for people's uh, uh, work situations and physical health. It's good to be praying um, for uh, exams and other matters like this. It's fine to be praying for those things. But uh, do we really show uh, love for one another in, in really praying for one another's faith, uh, that we might be found to be faithful followers of the Lord Jesus Christ? Are we conscious of the opposition that uh, other folks in church might be facing, uh, whether from unconverted family or difficult work colleagues or um, spiritual doubts uh, about what, where things are going on. Do we ever talk about uh, these things? Um, perhaps a good question um, to uh, ask might be, what are you finding hard about following Jesus at the moment? Uh, just to find out and to be able to pray for each other and encourage each other uh, in these uh, things. And uh, Ultimately, the thing that Paul prays for in all of this is that the Lord uh, Jesus uh, would uh, strengthen our hearts so that we will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones, that we will be strengthened to press on um, and be ready for the day when Jesus returns. And folks, that's, the, that's our biggest need. It's great that vaccines are available. It's great that we're emerging from lockdown. It's uh, lots of good things to look forward to, lots of good things to be praying about too, and opportunities to be grasped. But the thing that really matters is that when Jesus comes again, uh, we are found trusting in him. When uh, perhaps our time is up on this earth and we're called into uh, the, the, the world to come, that we're found uh, faithful uh, following the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and uh, we need to pray that we'll be strengthened in doing that in the here and now. So let's pray for each other. Father God, our desire is that for each of us, we would know the reality of what it is for our hearts to be strengthened so that we may be blameless and holy in the presence of you, our God and Father, when our Lord Jesus Christ comes with all his holy ones. May our hearts be overflowing uh, with love for each other. Uh, Father, we pray that you'd help us to uh, identify what is most important to be showing concern about. Father, forgive us that... Uh, we can be very superficial in our relationships and that we can um, be very trivial in the things that uh, we ask about and inquire about. Father, we pray you'd help us to be better at strengthening one another in our faith, at uh, being more concerned about our spiritual well-being. Uh, Father, we pray that you would give us the, the, um, the level of concern to ask after one another how we are doing uh, in following Jesus, that we would be uh, quick to strengthen and encourage each other in our following of Jesus, rather than tearing each other down or being critical. Um, we pray, Lord, that we might be those who are uh, drawing alongside and strengthening in faith and encouraging uh, in the way. Be, be gracious to us, we pray, and help us. And uh, Father, we pray that we might be, like Paul, even willing to, to make sacrifices of our own comfort um, and ease in order to ensure the well-being and the help of others, particularly, Father, as we um, come out of lockdown and uh, um, just uh, everything's a little bit tentative and uncertain. Perhaps we're uh, nervous about uh, coming out and, or um, um, it's going to be uh, interrupting our convenience to, to have to, 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 to come out and, and do new, new things in, in terms of routines. Uh, Father, help us to, 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 to move outside of just our, our preferences uh, to seeking to care for one another, being patient with one another, seeking to think through how we can get alongside and encourage each other. Um, as the, the church regathers uh, in this this current phase, and we we ask for your help in this, in Jesus' name, Amen.